Hello and greetings fellow StarCrafters, PGL Mildencraft here with Game 4 between the Red Protoss player OGSMC and CC Mixaya, the blue Protoss player that we see right here. Uh, as you can see this is a Protoss versus Protoss and the map is Taldarim Altar, which is one of the biggest maps, it tends to be very macro oriented, although as I've been talking about in previous broadcasts, well I guess previous videos, uh, in the same series, Protoss, Protoss, Protoss games tend to be uh, tend to not be very macro oriented. We actually haven't, haven't seen an expansion or even someone try an expansion in any of the previous games. It's very hard to secure an expansion because the I input of 400 minerals uh, is is really substantial. It really lowers your army size temporarily and allows your opponent to kind of move in and deal a lot of damage, which is why Protoss versus Protoss games tend to be very rapid. This is on the newest patch. We haven't seen... Uh, we have seen a lot of players not do four gates. We've actually only seen one true four gate out of all of the matches we see. And before before the new patch, I would say that four gate was a relatively common strategy. It would occur maybe you know, you know maybe like maybe a third or more or half of the time. And we've only seen one true one. We haven't seen any four gate versus four gate. So definitely the patch is spicing things up again, allowing people to try different strategies and so on. We do uh, we do see that MC is in fact up up two games. On his opponent, or up one game, sorry, so it's two to one for MC on his opponent, McSyad. He won the previous game using uh, Immortals mostly and better unit composition, able to just deal a lot of damage to his opponent using the Immortals, who of course deal 50 damage a shot to Stalkers, and was able to just take out his opponent uh, very quickly doing that. We see two scouts leaving, well, McSyad's scouts leaving just a little bit quicker, and then MC scouts can go ahead and slide out. We can actually just follow the uh, probe as it's sliding along. But -bop 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 -bop. I guess is the sound probes, probes would make. Maybe they sound like R2-D2, actually, where uh, no one understands what he's saying, but Luke understands for no reason. Uh, one of the big features of this map is that there's a wide open center area, which uh, is elevated, actually. There's four ramp huge ramps which lead to it. And then there's four watchtowers, which are which control the entirety of the vision within the middle of the map. If you have those four, you are if you have all four watchtowers, you're able to see basically all of the movement going along inside of the map, all of the ground unit movement anyway. Of course, flying units can still zoom around there, or blink stalkers or something like that uh, can still get around. Who do you see? Because McSai sent out his probe earlier, uh, then he's going to go ahead and get there faster. Ooh, we actually see a second gateway from OGSMC uh, shortly after his gateway finish. This is different than normal. It might be that he knows, or he doesn't actually know yet. Now he's about to see that his opponent is in fact in cross positions, which makes it a little bit harder to attack. Not so much in Protoss versus Protoss, because uh, they're able to get... Uh, warp in stalkers, of course, in the gateway units. So I'm not quite sure what MC is planning here. Uh, this is a build I'm a little bit unfamiliar with. There is a build that gets uh, three stalkers that you chrono boost out right away and try to clear any opponent's pylons. The move is designed to counter four gates. It's possible that he just wants to get out some early units and then transition into a robotics bay, something of a more economical way. It's a little bit different than the uh, three gate that he was trying in terms of in terms of holding off your opponent because you're able to just get a bunch of units out right away um, instead of having just less production build facilities than your opponent. We do see two gateways on the part of... I'm sorry, three gateways on the part of my side. So my side is actually going for a four gate. And actually, just thinking about it, I believe it was actually... Uh uh, maybe we saw two four gates as possible. So, so my four gate is still a, pop or a somewhat popular build, uh, but it's not necessary to always go four gate. Uh, this map is especially suited to four gates because the ramp is so wide. As I was talking about in a previous game, sometimes you're able to hold a ramp with a three gate if you use force fields at proper times and prevent your opponent from busting in, which is part of the reason why they lowered the range of pylons down to six and a half so that it was harder to hide a pylon. Um, it allows stalkers to maybe shoot at them if they're right on the edge. Uh, you know, you can't just put them on the edge, be safe from stalker fire on the top and still use them to warp in units. Uh, so it's just a little bit of protection. Uh, a little bit of a change uh, to encourage kind of a diversity of builds. I think they view the Protoss versus Protoss matchup as just a little bit broken. You know, there's not many, there's only a very select number of units that are used. Although Phoenix have become a lot more powerful rec or a lot more popular recently because Phoenix are so just so unbelievably good against uh, Colossus. Uh, mostly because nothing is really good at killing Phoenixes in the Protoss army except for other Phoenixes because. Stalkers uh, only deal 10 damage per shot against Phoenixes, and Phoenixes just have too much health. They're just firing way too slow to really deal a lot of damage to them. Meanwhile, Phoenixes don't really deal that much damage to other units, with the exception of uh, Colossus, just because they're continuous fire. We do actually see four Stalkers on the part of MC. It's actually going to be this is 
poor unit composition. MC has two gateways on the way, but they're going to finish later than his opponents. His opponent's going to have a lot more units than him. And we see his army size is actually six higher. He's currently supply blocked and actually not building a pylon. So it's possible that he's actually going to be a little bit behind here. He needs to start his pylon real quick. There you go. But of course, he has to wait for his of cooldowns to finish anyway. MC needs a force field here. Uh, that was a pretty good force field. Now he's going to be able to micro against the Zealots. The Zealots are going to move back so they can stay on the protection of the Stalkers. It's not going to matter too much, though, because the um, MC is going to be able to micro his units to be able to take out the Zealots right away. So it's a great division. He's out of force fields now, so he's going to have to switch to Guardian Shield. MC is going to producing more Stalkers. And actually, his superior micro here is helping him. I still think he's a little bit behind, if only because part of his army is, uh, is sentries. And sentries, once they're depleted of energy, actually don't do anything to help you really much because they deal such little DPS and they don't really like it of a damage deal. Dealer. Meanwhile, he's going to go ahead and micro uh, back against this. Those force fields weren't really quite effective. Not quite sure what he's trying to accomplish with those force fields. He'd been better off waiting. Uh, meanwhile, he's going to go ahead and take out the Zealot and slide on forward. McSide is actually waiting for more units. And actually, MC has more units right now. Wow, MC did a great job of holding that up. Superior micro in the century use. You see, those great force fields to be able to divide the Zealots from the um, Stalkers meant that even with a slower, more defensive build, MC was able to hold it off without the four gateways. So it's, you know, stark contrast to game one where he just had one fewer gateway and was having to lose. In this game, he actually had two fewer gateways by the time the game, had, or by the time the combat had started and was still able to hold it off despite his uh, lesser amount of units. And actually, um, with the sentries, typically speaking, you know, having too many sentries with the Protoss army is bad. And MC realizes that opponent's at weakness right now. He's going to go ahead and move across the entirety of the map. Uh, we should see a probe... Um, actually, I don't see a probe. Oh, sorry, my mistake. There's a pylon right up there. So he's already warping in units to his opponent's base. He's going to trap that Stalker, deal a little bit of damage. Stalker's probably going to get away, though. Oh, no, he's actually not going to get away. He's just going to take it out. Wow. That's a lot of damage that MC's dealing. You see his eight ahead of, nine ahead supply ahead of his opponent right now. He's going to move in with the Stalkers. Great force fields, but only able to trap one Stalker. Um, not quite as effective as MC, who was able to trap three Zealots on the Stalker, which is, um... And now, uh, Maxias, uh, centuries are out of energy. Meanwhile, MC is three centuries enough. I uh, have enough energy for Guardian Shield, able to perfectly place to be able to stop the Zealots from being able to escape and cover the most amount of ground. Great job on the part of MC. He's now able to slide his army forward as soon as those, uh, as soon as those force fields expire. He's going to go ahead and move forward, and MC is way ahead in this game. Wow, just look at him blasting apart at his opponents, focusing down the injured ones, making sure he deals the most damage to the ones that um, are need to be taking damage, and Maxiah's going to go ahead and GG out of this game. Great job, great defensive ability. Uh, this division from the force fields of the centuries on that one choke point was what really did Maxiah in, and MC did a great job of dealing a lot of damage there, and this was a really terrific series, really great way to see, you know, what what's new in store, f and the way the players are reacting to the changes in warp gate and, and increasing of it 20 seconds and the decreasing length of the pylons arc um arc uh, power arc and this is a terrific game mc one of the best protest players in the world one of the best pvpers in the world go oh, wins this series three to one and uh it's really terrific i was really happy to be able, i was able to watch these games this is pgo elvin has left the game uh good thing Elvin. elvin i thought it was elvis at first elvis hasn't left the building but uh this is pgo Millcraft signing off i'll see you guys later